Hey guys, it's me, Tina. I live with my husband and two of our beautiful children. My husband is very caring and loving, but my mistake could have cost me our beautiful relationship. This incident is two years ago, when I was not very happy with our sexual relationship. Of course, my husband loved me and our children very much, but at that time, he was not able to give us proper time due to busy schedule. I am a 30-year-old girl with high sexual needs, and so I wanted to spice things up with my husband. But at the same time, I understood his workload, so I did not mention much about it to him. But inside, I was very restless. One day, I decided to go for a party with my bestie, so that I can reduce my stress a little bit, and there I met a six-feet-tall muscular guy named Jack. He offered me a glass of wine, so we drank together, talked a lot, and danced for a while after that. It was nice to meet him, and he invited me to meet him again the next weekend, and so I agreed. The next time we met, he said to me, It's very busy here, so let's go to my apartment and have a coffee. It was very strange, and I was thinking to myself that, why should I go to his apartment? I'm a married girl, and why should I go alone with this guy? Of course, he was very tempting to me, but I have a family, and I have a beautiful husband. Drinking and dancing is good. Going to his place is not good. I refused him and wanted to leave, but he held my hand, but I managed to escape. Next day, I received a message. Hey! Why did you run away from there? We are good friends, and if you don't come to meet me, I will come to your house. I don't know from where he got my number, but I blocked him. Next day, he texted me again from a new number and said, it's very rude that you blocked me. I replied, I don't want to talk to you. I'm a married girl now, please don't text me again. And then I blocked him again. A few weeks later, I was coming home after grocery, and suddenly I felt someone is stalking me. It was him. It was Jack. I ran and get into my house, but it wasn't enough that he started shouting outside. I want to marry you, and I will not leave you until you say yes to me. I scared and immediately called my husband and cops, but before they came, he ran away. My husband was very angry with me, but I explained to him what I was going through, and thankfully he understood. But still he was angry with me for many days, but after a few days everything got fine, and then he started giving us proper time. A few days later, it was reported in the newspaper that Jack had been arrested in a rape case. I fell into a deep thought and said to myself, what was I going to do? I was going to ruin this beautiful life of mine. But I am happy that I got such an understanding husband. Otherwise, I don't know what would have happened to me today. And even today, whenever I think about that incident, I get scared. I was in middle school when Formspring.me became popular. It's just one of those anonymous question-asking websites for those who don't know. Anyways, I had one of those, and one day, I guess it was Monday, I started getting these creepy submissions saying stuff like, I watch you going down street after school all the time. And, you're so beautiful, I want to rape you so badly. Stuff like that. But at this point, it kind of just weirded me out and didn't think too much about it, since it was likely a friend of mine just screwing with me. So I took down my Formspring site and went about my day. But the next day, I started receiving really creepy emails from someone I didn't know. They started to get really creepy, mentioning my teacher's names, asking me to meet them at the park so they could rape me, counting down the days I would die, and describing in detail about how he would rape me, then kill me, and kill anyone else that was with me. So I started getting really freaked out and blocking the emails, but he realized this and started making new emails to send me every day. Every day he would count down the days until my death. I really didn't want to tell my parents this, since I still thought that it was maybe a joke, but I ended up breaking on that Wednesday after my school administration did nothing about it. They kept me in from school on Thursday and on Friday, and called the police. The police eventually found out it was just some random quiet kid in my math class, who I've never talked to, nor had mutual friends with. This was probably the scariest thing that's happened to me, just because the emails were so descriptive, and because the kid was just some random guy I didn't know at all. I was so young, and all of my friends never took it seriously. I really couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, 
and I was always shivering. Thinking about it just makes me really uncomfortable. My first serious boyfriend stalked me for about five years after I broke up with him. The reason I broke up with him is because I noticed him becoming increasingly possessive and controlling. This worried me a lot, and I was really young. He was older than me, so I decided to get out. The breakup itself was so brutal, he cried and screamed and begged. Initially, after the breakup, his behavior seemed like the harmless actions of a bitter ex. Constant texting and phone calls, sending gifts to my workplace, that sort of thing. After about six months when this hadn't died down, I started bumping into him on my way home from work, or if I was out shopping, so I ended up moving. I couldn't leave my job immediately, but moving house didn't make a difference anyway. This behavior continued for a few years. His behavior became increasingly worse. I'd rather not go into detail, and the police were very reluctant to do anything. I moved every six, nine months and changed jobs twice, but somehow he always managed to track me down. I didn't use social media, and even insisted friends of mine not take any pictures of me, in case they posted them on social media. I kept my phone number within my circle of friends, but somehow he always managed to get my new number. I ended up a paranoid wreck thinking that one of my friends had betrayed me, or that my phone company had me listed in a phone book, and all others kinds of crazy thoughts. Then another year passed, and as our encounters got worse, again, I'd rather not go into detail, I decided to report him to the police again, and this time, they took some action. At this stage, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I couldn't concentrate at work. I was a shell. About two months after I reported him to the police, I woke up one morning to a story in the newspapers about staff in the National Tax Office using resources improperly. My ex was the main perpetrator, using his job to access all of my information. In his job, he had access to my tax records, which meant every time I changed job, address, or phone number, he had access to the most up-to-date information. Before the court case began, he committed suicide, and I'm not ashamed to say I cried with relief. They were the worst years of my adult life. When I was about 19, I met this guy who worked at the subway near where I worked. He was a nice enough guy, and he took me out on a date. Everything started off really well, but about a week into it, he started asking me for money. It started off small at first, like for a soda or five bucks for gas. Then he started asking for larger amounts, like a few hundred to get him by for a week or so. I never gave it to him he started wanting to move in together within about two weeks of dating. When we would go out places, he started to do very weird things. He would start screaming in public or singing nonsense at the top of his lungs. He would always play around afterward that he was just having fun, but it was weird and embarrassing to be seen with him. Also, my dog who loves everyone would not let him near me. I've never seen that dog so much as growl at another person, but he would try and bite the shit out of him when he came close to me. By the end of the second week, I broke up with him over the phone. I normally didn't do that, but at the time, his erratic behavior made me nervous. He completely flipped the fuck out. He started showing up where I worked, to the point where my manager had to ban him from the building, and co-workers walked me to my car. He would show up literally everywhere I was, even to the grocery store or the gas station. I started getting text messages and weird email about how we were meant to be and he couldn't live without me and such. Then one day he showed up in the middle of the night and told me to come outside. I told him to leave or I was going to the cops. He literally started sobbing to the point where he was almost hyperventilating. I went back inside and locked the house up. The next day I was home alone and just doing some work when I heard some rustling by the front door. I thought it was just the dog messing around or the mailman or something but the dog started barking and growling. The doorbell began to ring. I didn't think much of it, probably just a solicitor. They someone started messing with the door handle. I grabbed a broom of all things because that was all I had, and I heard someone open the door. My dog tried to bite him, and I locked myself in my bathroom and started screaming that I called the police. He up and ran away. I called my neighbor who lived across the street from me and was former military. He checked out the house and made sure he was gone. 
My dog had a few scrapes and cuts on him, but he was okay. I filed for a restraining order the next day, and my dad took the liberty of calling his father and explaining what happened. I received a few other emails him following that, but he never came to my house again. Luckily, I've moved a few hours away and I'm married now, but it was still very frightening at the time considering this was only about a three-week period.